This is a beach house that one of our students designed in Revit. His name is David Norman. And um, the cool thing about uh, 3D models, this is using Revit. The cool thing about 3D models is you model this first and then you go in and put in these cross sections. There's the dock, the lower level, the floor plan. So a floor plan is a cross section four feet up from, from your um, floor on the inside of the house. You're essentially cutting everything away and looking down into it, right? And so that's what this is showing. So there will be different layers, slices, if you will, of this beach house so that you can look at that. And that's what this is showing. These are the names of those slices that you can actually show in a document. So if you say, I'm going to put a view in of this model, you say, I want the view of the lower roof. Bam, there it is. Because you established that in the model. Now, these are cross vertical cross-section views. And this is saying slopes, but this is showing the slope of this pitch or the angle of this roof. Now, these are cross-section views. And there will be a lot of cross-section views in a, in a um, house because there are, if there are any built-ins or anything, you got to show that the height of that. Bathrooms, kitchens, um, built-in pantries, anything with built-ins, you've got to have cross-sections to show at what levels you want those. Or as a builder, they can kind of just make their best, best guess. And you got to live with it because you didn't specify it on the drawing. Or you didn't, as a designer, you need to make sure that the customer gives you that input. You've got to ask the right questions to get the correct answers for the builder. All right. So this is what's called an elevation view because it's a side view. We're used to seeing lots of floor plans, but the outside views of a house, if I see an outside view of a house on a floor plan and I don't like it, I don't need to see the floor plan. Next, swipe left. If I see an outside view or the elevation, seeing the height, and I like the design, hey, that looks kind of good. Let me see what the floor plan's like. So usually the first page that I put in a document is are the elevation views of a house. All right, let's go to the next one. Ooh, right button. Okay, and then these, this is um, the floor plan. So you can see that it's just cut through these walls. So it is essentially slice sections. And in those slice sections, the model's already done. So you just put the dimensions in or retrieve them from the model. What did it take to build the model? You had to build a 3D model. You can retrieve those out. And the cool thing about Revit is you go in and you set up your wall, um, what your walls are built of, and it knows how to go in and put it in in that thickness. You have half inch drywall, you got uh, wood fascia, you've got brick, um, the whole setup of the wall. All right. And then you just say how big it is and it either insets or outside outsets that wall, either inside or outside. So it's all in the model now. And that's the fun part. Okay. Mechanical drafters work with the mechanical engineers. Um, you're not really... Uh, you don't know a lot of the engineering theory. So a lot of that is trial and error, but the drafters usually take what's given to them and put them in, put it in a legal document. With the onset of 3D models, I would take my 3D model and toss it over the wall and say, go make me a drawing of it. I don't give them a paper document. All the information is inside that model now. So I don't have to give them a drawing, you know, that says what the dimensions should be there. If I'm designing that correctly, I'm putting those dimensions in with relationships that should be taken out, you know, the size and location of notations, you just retrieve them into the drawing and that's how easy it is now. So you just have to know the rules of drawings. Aerospace and aeronautical, now that's really different. I got to work with that at Boeing. It was one of my first mechanical jobs. And expansion, contraction, think about how hard it is on tarmac as opposed to, you know, miles in the air. 
Um, also, um, vibration. We could not have anything that was um, screwed down. If it would shear off screws, um, any kind of electronics that you had, had to be on what was called floating nut plates. And those things could move around when you screwed. And so they moved around inside the aircraft. So nothing is, everything's kind of floating inside an aircraft so that uh, no matter what, it can still work and it doesn't break. So different things to think about in different, you know, in different products. So if you worked at a car manufacturer and you had a plastic, bumper it expands when you go south of south of the equator and it gets real it shrinks when it go when we go north way north so you got to think about how is that material going to react no matter where this car is sold so you got to think about different things in different fields civil drafters and design technicians is what they call you guys it's kind of cool it's kind of a neat thing um you're going to prepare construction documents that have curves. You see those C numbers? That's the length of that curve. That's the size of that curve. And it has a code to it. So this has a different way of speaking. It's different terminology than I would use in a mechanical drawing. And so we have uh, feet and decimal inches. And why do I have decimal inches? That's really tight. Because over a mile, if you're off by a decimal inch, you know, a tenth of an inch or something, it could be a long way at the other end of that line, right? Angles, very important. They go to thousands of a degree because over a long distance, it could really make a big change. So very different. And that has... These civil plats have to be turned into the city. There, there has to be permitting for all that. And if anything changes in that, you've got to go back through that permitting process and get that approved. So you might see offset boundaries like this for utilities or, you know, that zoning that says that I can't build my house any closer to the road than 25 feet. So if I build up there, guess who has to tear it down and move it back here? Me. I'm responsible for that. So as a technician or a designer or a, you know, an architectural technician, you're going to need to do some research and find out, you know, what can I do here? Oh, told you my mouse is funky. Let me go back here. Here we are. Electrical drafters. You guys might not have known about this, but uh, electrical drafters, are going to create the connection diagram that says how something actually works. Last night I was working on my electric gate and the cord got pulled out of the power supply that comes from a plug-in and converts it to 24 volts. Or I'd have to run it on two car batteries. Now I don't want to do that. This, it's an automatic gate to my, to my drive. So those Things got pulled out of there, and I was online searching for a schematic to figure out which wire went, the red wire or the black wire, which one goes to which post. So, you know, that's that's those connection diagrams. And if they're incorrect, sometimes, like a battery, things have polarity, or they're polarized, like this diode right here. This diode has polarity. This is a positive side. This is a, this is a negative side. If you switch a car battery um, cables around, it's going to really not be good. Let me say that. This circuit might not work correctly. So what I ended up doing, not finding that thing, was I had to go and plug it in, unplug it from all the circuitry down the line, and then read my voltage, positive or negative, from what I was doing last night. Now, I would take something like this, and I used to be a printed circuit board designer, and so I would take this kind of symbology and then this is really a resistor, you know, so what it is is a wound wire and it's inside a little component like that. And what I would do is I would lay out the components per the connection diagram 
and you can run a test and see if all the connection diagrams right. But we used to have smart schematics that were all connected electrically so that it dumped it into our printed circuit boards. Um, and this looks pretty boring, but it's spatial allocation. It's the same thing as designing, you know, how close parts can be together or houses can be together or streetlights can be together. So it's all about spatial requirement, no matter what you do. All right. We don't do this. We don't teach it. It's a big deal in Houston. Pipeline drafters and process pipeline drafters. Now this is uh, processing and fitting. And uh, Autodesk actually has a, a 3D auto pros, uh, pipe processing software. And um, they're called p and IDs. And that was like a connection diagram, like an electrical one, but for plumbing. And you will have a lot of valves and check valves and that kind of thing and process plants. So that's why we don't have a lot of that here. And I'm kind of grateful because if you've ever been, you know, in some places, it's like big chemical plants everywhere. It's kind of different, but it's a good industry. If you think about going, uh, they do teach us at Houston Community College. So I'm about to run out of time. Qualities, be on time. Write down things when people say things. Um, make sure that you ask people, you know, ask people their opinions because it's not all about us. It's not all about me. So if I went to interview with someone, I asked them why they work there because you got to sell me on your company too, right? I may be scrounging for a job, but it's, you know, you don't want to be hopping from job to job either. That's something that you want to do is you want to be a little bit dedicated, but you want to have good file management. You want to be very, very specific and detailed. That's what makes good technical drawings. And you want to be on time. You want to, you want to dress for success. You, you know, even this is a real, real relaxed environment in Austin. But we had a guy go and interview at a company and it went all the way up to the senior VP and he says, no, I don't like his, his, uh, what do you call it? He didn't look clean and groomed. Right. And some people are still old school. So it's, it's still a professional environment. Um, what if you took a job at another place? It wasn't so relaxed like Austin. Austin's kind of gotten a little bit off key with that but think of everyone as a client and you want to be your best for your client all right are you a quick learner will you go and figure something out will you go and research it yourself instead of coming in and asking someone all the time uh, will you fit in with that group that's a big thing it's like a family in a lot of these companies so you want to ask those other people about themselves and kind of see some common interest. Do you make good grades? A lot of people are going to look for a certain GPA to hire you. Uh, Applied Research Laboratory, JJ Pickle, or the UT Research Laboratory won't hire anyone with lower than a three-point GPA. You want to keep your grades up. It's not about getting out. It's about doing well. Um, can you meet deadlines? Um let me see. Are you dependable? Do you show up when under a lot of stress you're dependent on as a team member a lot? So you need to learn that skill. Uh, will you pro will your employer profit from your efforts? If you're extremely slow and you don't care how fast you get so something done, you're going to be worth less money to someone that can crank it out and be very good and defined with it. All right. Um, set high standards for your work. Make sure you do the best you can in this class. Come to class prepared on time. Even coming five minutes early, we were just talking about that. Kind of takes it. You just kind of sit back and relax for five minutes. It's so nice instead of, uh, but that makes me plan ahead to when I need to get ready to when I need to do this. I got to back that all the way up to the what time I get up in the morning. So um, being prepared. Uh, I will be one of your references. 
and your resume if you reach out to get a job if you ever want me to and all your teachers will be your references because maybe you haven't worked in this field before so it's very important the way that you interact in class um, your grades um, you're turning things in on time you know when you make an impression on someone to give you a good uh, report on that all right and this talks about what people make so it talks about um, let's see our architectural and civil drafters were at 57,000 uh, mechanical 58 and electrical and electronic 62,000 you may think it looks boring but it's like a different language so it's a little bit harder so when you look at architects, 82,000, mechanical, 90,000, civil, 88,000, and for electrical, 103,000 again. Those guys, uh, it, like I said, it's a different language. And we have IC layout and printed circuit board design. So if you want in on some of that, that used to be my driver. How much money am I going to make? When do I get to make more money? What do I have to do to make more money? I was really like that when I was young. All right. So your homework assignment, here it is. What you might want to do is look at the chapter one review questions. And they're in the PDF. Name three terms that are used to describe the creation of technical drawings. Because the review questions, so let me get the book. The review questions, so let's look at chapter one. And you know, I've never gone over these in a class, so this is a little bit different. They're in your they're in your PDF. They're in the back of your book. What's shown there is in your book. So look those over and see if you can answer them here. If you find these answers here, hint, hint, it will probably be on that review quiz. So with that, I'm going to stop this and we're going to get over to that. I'm going to show you where that is. And I want you guys to do that before next time. So look through chapter one, do the review exercise, which is true, false, and multiple choice in, in your uh, unit one. And then I want you to read a little bit of unit two because we're going to start in with that next time. And I'm going to give you some, some drawing exercises with that next time. So over the weekend, you're going to have some hands-on work. You kinesthetic workers, you're going to have it all easy because you're going to love it, okay? So I'm going to stop this and we'll get into the other one.